George Orwell wrote the book 1984. And in the book he wrote this. Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. It is evident that man has been unable to exercise any control over his destiny. Yet he persistently seeks to discover what the future holds. Lost in the shadow of his own ignorance, he hangs on the words of anyone who claims prophetic vision. American presidents have turned to astrologers and numerologists. Hard-bitten businessmen have made decisions on the turn of a tarot card, all in a vain attempt to crack the code that will unpack tomorrow. What vanity declares the philosopher? Who can tell a man what will happen after him under the sun? There is no ghost of Christmas past, present or future. Destiny lies in the hand of our sovereign God. Welcome to our Wednesday worship. We hope that you find some inspiration or some challenge in the words this morning. So listen as we read from Ecclesiastes chapter 6 and verses 1 to 12. I have seen another evil under the sun, and it weighs heavily on mankind. God gives some people wealth, possessions and honour, so that they lack nothing their hearts desire. But God does not grant them the ability to enjoy them, and strangers enjoy them instead. This is meaningless, a grievous evil. A man may have a hundred children and live many years. Yet no matter how long he lives, if he cannot enjoy the prosperity and does not receive proper burial, I say that a stillborn child is better off than he. It comes without meaning. It departs in darkness. And in darkness its name is shrouded. Though it never saw the sun or knew anything, it has more rest than does that man, even if he lives a thousand years twice over, but fails to enjoy his prosperity. Do not all go to the same place? Everyone's toil is for their mouth, yet their appetite is never satisfied. What advantage have the wise fools have the wise over fools? What do the poor gain by knowing how to conduct themselves before others? Better what the eye sees than the roving of the appetite. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Whatever exists has already been named. And what humanity is has been known. No one content, can contend with someone who is stronger. The more the words, the less the meaning. And how does that profit anyway? For who knows what is good for a person in life? During the few and meaningless days, they pass through like a shadow. Who can tell them what will happen under the sun after they are gone? Amen. And may God add his blessing to this the reading of his holy word, and to him be all the glory and all the praise. I wonder if, like the people in this story, you have ever experienced the loss of your entire wealth. I wonder when was the last time you really felt contented. So what would you like to say now to God about those different feelings. Let's just listen to some music and think about those questions.
I have never been a wealthy man. I have never invented anything that made me as wealthy as Bill Gates. I have never inherited a massive estate with a mansion and millions of pounds in the bank. I've never even robbed a bank or stolen anything of value. I have never been in a job that paid me a massive bonus, nor have I earned the kind of salary a top executive or a professional sports person might command. My life could have unfolded differently. I had a great, great, great grandfather who owned almost half of Coat Bridge at one time. But he could not read or write, and the money and the land was stolen from him by his very own lawyer. Instead of being a Scotsman, I could have been a South African. If my dad had taken the risk to move there post-war, which his friend did and became a very, very wealthy businessman there. Had I ever been good enough at football, I may well have signed for Manchester United and earned around £500,000 a week. But the best I ever managed was playing for Aberdeen University against Peterhead in the third round of the Scottish Cup and we get fed pie and chips at the end of the match. However, I have invested money that never made me a penny. I have known the pain of seeing my hard-earned money disappear down the drain and how painful an experience that was for Linda and I. It promised so much but it delivered nothing. And maybe the best plan is just to spend what you have and be a little happy in doing something that you know you will enjoy. In Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verses 7 and 8, we read the following. All man's labour is for his stomach, yet the appetite is never satisfied. What advantage then does the wise man have over the fool? What is advantage is there for the poor person who knows how to conduct himself before others? When Jewish psychiatrist Viktor Frankl was arrested by the Nazis in World War II and put in Auschwitz, the infamous death camp, he was stripped of everything. Property, family, possessions, and a manuscript. He has spent years researching and writing on finding meaning in life. The manuscript had been sewn into the lining of his coat. Franco said, Now it seemed as if nothing and no one would survive me. Neither a physical nor a spiritual child of my own. I find myself confronted with the question of whether under such circumstances my life was ultimately void of meaning. A few days later, the Nazis <coughs> forced the prisoners to give up what little clothing they still wore. I had to surrender my clothes, he said, and in turn inherited the worn-out rags of an inmate who had been sent to the gas chamber. Instead of the many pages of my manuscript, I found in the pocket of the newly acquired coat a single page torn out of a Hebrew prayer book which contained the Jewish prayer, Shema Yisrael. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. 
Franco said, How should I have interpreted such a coincidence? Other than as a challenge to live my thoughts instead of merely putting them on paper. Franco later reflected on his ordeal in man's search for meaning, saying, There is nothing in the world that would so effectively help one to survive even the worst conditions as the knowledge that there is meaning in one's life. He who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. He who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. In other words, no matter what life throws at you, make what you can of every minute. And do not be driven to have more than you ever need, for you have as much chance as losing it as you have of winning it. Let's come before God in a moment of prayer. Lord, whatever we have, may we be thankful. Whatever is taken from us, help to live without it. Whatever life throws at us, help us never to give in and to put our trust in you. And may the blessing of God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, bless and sustain us today and every day. Amen.